back to CFB Nation. I'm your host, Nino Brown. And we got a very special interview today with five-star DB, Jalen Mbakwe. How are we doing tonight, buddy? Good. How about you? Uh, I can't complain. Uh, appreciate you coming on, taking time out of your busy schedule to do the interview with CFB Nation. We greatly appreciate it. Oh, yeah. No problem. All right. Uh, Clay Chalkville Cougars finished dating two this season um, with three lopsided shutout victories versus Pell City, Huffman, and Shades <clears throat> Valley. Can you talk to us a little bit about the the week two game versus Pell City where you went three receptions for 97 yards and a touchdown? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, no. I, I wasn't going to score that game. I had to bet, <laughs> had to bet my receiver coach throwing me the ball. But, I mean – it was, I mean, it was great. I mean, getting the whole team back together. So it was just a first, it was a feel for the whole team being back together and stuff like that. All right. All right. Um, now you, you can play at all three phases of the game offense, defense, special teams. What makes you so versatile? And what part of, of playing football do you enjoy the most? Um, I mean, what made me so versatile is like me knowing everything on the field, like my high IQ of everything and just, I mean, just being around it long enough and playing with older guys all my life. So that's what makes me so versatile. And then what I love about it most is just being around my teammates mostly. Now, what position I, – I know you're going to the next level at DB, but what position do you like to play the most? Corner. Okay. All right. All right. Good answer. <laughs> now, you, you suffered um, a knee injury versus Oxford um, last season, but you also threw a touchdown pass in that game. Uh, talk to us about the touchdown pass. I know that wasn't scripted. And then um, how's the knee now, and how did the rehab process go? Uh, the touchdown pass, I mean, <laughs> I knew I could make the pass. It was just a matter of time when we was going to score. But the knee is fine now. I mean, it took me like a couple weeks. I mean, it was stressful, like not being able to do nothing, not being able to cut, practice, or do anything like that because I feel – like, I don't even remember missing the practice since I was, like, 10. So, And I've always played through an injury. So, yeah, it was kind of tough getting back through an injury and stuff like that. Uh, how was that first initial practice, you know, coming off the injury? Were you, were you a little bit hesitant or you were like, no, nah, I'm a full go? I didn't even practice after that. Yeah. <laughs> season, my season ended two weeks after. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and you wear the number nine? Does that number have a special meaning to you? Uh, nah, I mean, I kept it because of Peter Ward. You can say that. Okay. All right. Peter Ward, the Forest State Seminole, man. He, he got jiggy for sure. <laughs> um, you had offers from Colorado, Bama, Purdue, Auburn, Arkansas, and to name a few others, but you decided to shut it all down, the recruitment process early and commit to Bama. Uh, what made you decide to commit to Bama early and what are your relationships like with, with Tavarius Robinson and Kevin Steele? Oh, uh, I mean, I should have down early just because, like, the family atmosphere there, they, like, treated me like family and my, uh, my mom and dad like family, my sisters and all that. So, like, we came, like, me and my family sat down and talked about it, and it was just, uh, we came to a conclusion to just shut it down. And uh, my my relationship with Coach T-Rob is, like, big brother, little brother, very cool person. I like the way he coached. Uh, and then Coach Steele. I mean, I met him. He was at Miami. He was trying to get me to flip from Miami. <laughs> once he, I mean, he tried to get me to flip from Alabama to go to Miami. Then once he went to Belmont, we just locked in from there. Nice, nice. He was already recruiting you before he was. Uh, he was at the, the the school you're at now. So that, that you know, that full circle. You gotta love it. Um, now, um, can you, what is a professional athlete or a collegiate athlete that you say you might watch a little bit and pull some tips away to better help your craft? Kool-Aid Mukesh. Oh, that's my dude, bro. He, he is locked down. I called him locked down before the first snap this year, and he just balled out. I love it. You, you're you going to be right there with him. <laughs> now, um, you, you showed up and showed out this True Exposure Championship, the 7-on-7 seven seven event. Can you talk to us a little bit about that event? Uh, I mean – just getting back with my old 7 on 17, really. Uh, got all the guys together to come play in the tournament, and we just agreed on it, and we played and balled out. Even though I rolled my ankle, just trying to do too much. But other than that, I had fun. They had fun. That's all that matters, really. Now, what's one thing that people don't know about Jalen Mbakwe? 
Uh, I'm a goofy person. <laughs> you just like to have fun. Yeah. No. All right. Um. Now, you're a track guy, right? You like you you know you, you know sub eleven in, in hundred. You know you got that speed. Uh, from what I read, you might claim yourself the fastest man in Alabama right now. I'm just just saying, right? Um. What what's the atmosphere on the track and field? Is it from compared to like football? Do you have to turn a switch or is just all gas, no brakes all the time? Uh, I could say you have to turn a switch. I mean, from like like regular track meets to like sectionals and state and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, at like regular track meets, like it depends on who I'm running with. If I'm no, I'm the fastest guy there. Then I just won't show everything there. But when I get to like sectionals and state and county championship and stuff like that, then that's when I know it's time to run and do other stuff like that. All right, I'm gonna hit you with a couple of rapid fire questions off off the football topic and just to close it out. Um, number one pregame track in the earbuds right now. Anything with little baby in it. Okay, all right. He got he gets it. He gets a jump for sure. Um, all time favorite snack. All time favorite snack, uh, probably watermelon sour patch or some Oreos. Oh God, I do. my man with the watermelon sour patch. That's my number one. Them things, especially a fresh batch, nice and soft. There's nothing better. <laughs> um, give me your favorite athlete that does not play football. My favorite athlete that does not play football. <sighs> <laughs> uh, I probably have to say LeBron. All right, all right, and I'm gonna this one. I'm gonna close it out with this one. Breakfast cereal 101, the last bowl of cereal you can ever have. What are you rocking with? Ooh, <laughs> probably, probably cinnamon toast crunch. That, that's that's the number one. Number two is is uh, fruity pebbles. Now, I've been getting a lot of honey nut Cheerios lately from guys too. You sneak up in there, so. Uh, Jalen, I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule and, and doing the interview with us. Uh, I'd love to stay in contact, maybe circle back next year after the season's ended and see how things are going. Yes, sir. Most All day. right. I appreciate you. You have yourself a good night. All right. You too.